Hello everyone, Mark with High Tech Legion. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the Deep Cool Maelstrom 240 liquid CPU cooler. We're going to be giving you an overview, showing you what's all included inside the box, going through actual installation uh, into our case to show you how easy that is, and then giving you our final conclusion as well as some benchmark numbers, uh, some decibel meter testing, and some uh, overall temperature testing that we did with our Haswell and Intel i7 4770K. So stay tuned. So here we can see our actual all-in-one water cooling unit our fans with our red blades and our box uh, with the Maelstrom 240 liquid CPU cooler, kind of a breakdown of the internals of our pump housing here. And also we can see on the other side, it kind of depicts how this logo lights up with our plastic cover on here. Our box goes through a few basic features um, of the unit itself on the top here, and then also our dimensions of our unit on the back. Um, the basic features of this unit is the unique pump with the closed impeller, uh, the zirconia ceramic bearing, and a runtime on that pump of 120,000 hours. Inside the water block itself, it is a 0.2 millimeter high density micro channel and copper block, so the water can flow through and maximum transfer of the heat to the water and then into our radiator for maximum cooling capacity. We can also see our fans, which they are 120 millimeter fans. They are rubber fans. We can see them flex here. Uh, it is an FDB, a fluid dynamic bearing. And the fan blades are detachable. So you could take these fans off if you weren't a fan of red. Uh, take these fan blades off. You could paint them or just they're easily removable for cleaning, um, whatever else that you may need to do. Here are your four pin PWM on both of your fan on both of your fans. So those will plug in and can be PWM controlled. Here we can see our actual unit itself. And we'll go ahead and take a look. Now, one thing that I want to note on this is the actual um, tubing is the FEP tubing. It does have the the plastic which a good thing about that is it prevents it from kinking under tight bends. A bad thing about that is it's a little less flexible, so it's a little harder to work with if you're trying to, you know, depending on where you're going to be mounting your radiator inside your case, it's a little less flexible. So it doesn't have the give, but it does have the uh, non-kink capacity. On the top of the plastic here, we can see the GamerStorm logo that does light up. Uh, it's got a breathing effect, effect with a white LED. On the bottom here we can see our copper base plate. Um, I have cleaned the thermal paste off because this unit has already been mounted uh, for our testing. And we have our three pin connector to power our pump. The overall unit itself is from top of the radiator to the bottom of the radiator is 274 millimeters. It is of course 120 millimeters wide and it is 27 millimeters thick. It is an aluminum radiator, and since we have the copper block and the aluminum radiator, we can only assume that the fluid inside uh, must have agents for the multiple kinds of metal and also an agent to help the water from, their, from algae or anything growing inside the closed loop. It does come with a three-year warranty. So we can see also on our radiator here, our standard 120 millimeter mounting holes. And then we can see our fin density, which is pretty standard. Um, however, this is a 20 FPI density on the radiator. So, and actually what we did see with this cooler itself was at the lower speed as opposed to max speed on these fans. They do have a pretty decent static pressure. So at the lower speed, we didn't really see a great uh, performance increase going from uh, to our max fan speed. One other thing that we can note here is on the side of our pump housing, there is actually a sticker 
that says, caution, no warranty if torn. So they have told us of the 0.2 millimeter uh, micro channel inside our housing here for the, uh, the water block. However, we cannot actually look inside to verify that without voiding the warranty of this unit. We also have from the bottom of our block to the top of our unit is 31.5 millimeters. We have from the, the dimensions from the tubing here to the outside of the block here is 86, 85.6 millimeters and it is 54 millimeters within our screws that attach the block to the pump here from side to side. So overall, very lightweight radiator because it is the aluminum radiator. Uh, the whole unit itself is pretty lightweight. The block does have, the block and pump do have a little bit of weight to them. Um, but so far, seems like a pretty standard 240 millimeter all-in-one water cooling unit with the exception, again, of the fans. I thought this was a nice feature that they have the rubber. So when you're mounting these fans on the radiator, all you have to do is snug up the screws that hold them in place, which we'll show you that here when we mount all of our accessories to our unit and then go ahead and get it mounted inside our case all you got to do is snug them up and you can see the little bit of flex there so it helps prevent vibration uh, that was a nice feature and also with the removable fan blades um, for cleaning or for customizing so we're going to go ahead and get our accessories lined up over here so we can take a look at those so here we can see all of our included accessories we have our longer screws for holding our fans in place and also our shorter screws uh, for holding our radiator to our case provided in this baggie along with our plastic clips which hold our screws to our back plate. We have our Intel LGA 2011 mounting screws. We have our AMD brackets. Our Intel brackets and the hold down screws for the brackets and also the small screws to attach the brackets to the bottom of the CPU block. We have an included GamerStorm case badge. It is, uh, it's not uh, like a flexible sticker. It's actually like a metal, you know, maybe hard plastic badge. Deepcool does also include a four pin, four port PWM fan hub. So we have our one four pin PWM that could plug into our motherboard. And then we have our four ports, and of course the white one here would be our main port. Um, but you could plug three pin or four pin fans into this, so you could also plug your pump and both fans into this controller. Or you could plug your miscellaneous case fans into this controller and then regulate all the fans um, based on just this one controller. So a nice little added feature from Deepcool. They also include one zip tie with that controller to help with cable management. And then we have our two-in-one backplate. We can see this side says Intel, this side says AMD, and we'll go ahead and show you the mounting on this on our Intel socket 1150 motherboard. We have a little fan hub user guide. Doesn't give a lot of information, basically just says for further information, go to www.deepcoolglobal.com on the back, it does tell us what's included, the fan hub, um, a 3M sticker for affixing the hub to your case, and a cable tie. And then we have our user's manual, which goes through, of course, our mounting installation process. So, it's pretty straightforward as far as mounting goes, but it does give you something to reference um, so that you can see just how everything works. Again, if you've worked with, you know, either, even air coolers or other all-in-one water cooling units, um, most of the accessories and mounting uh, hardware that's included is pretty straightforward on how it would get mounted. But that's just a guide to go ahead and give you some additional information <clears throat> so that as you're mounting the unit, you have something to reference. So we're going to go ahead and start the prep on this unit. We're going to get our mounting block mounted to our uh, the bottom of our CPU block, or our mounting plates, I should say, mounted to the bottom of the CPU block. We're going to go ahead and get our fans in screw in screwed into our radiator, 
and get everything set so that we can begin the mounting in our case. Stay tuned. So here we can see our Intel mounting plate and we have our small screws that have a slight bevel to the uh, head of them on the underside and they are silver screws and that bevel is because they fit into the bevel on the mounting plate. The one side of the mounting plate is flat, this side is beveled. So when we're putting our mounting plate onto the bottom of our pump assembly, we would want to make sure that the beveled portion was facing upright so that we could actually, when we mount our screw, we'll be able to tighten it down and it'll sit inside that bevel and it won't it interfere at all with the mounting uh, to the motherboard. <clears throat> So we'll go ahead and get our four screws mounted in to our beveled surface here. And it's the same with the other side. Now again, these don't need to be over, overly tight. Snug is good. Uh, one thing I will mention here about the tubing on the radiator, being that it's not very flexible, um, turning this upright so that I can actually work on this unit and screw these in with the radiator facing just laying flat on the surface so that it doesn't fall over, uh, we can definitely feel the tension on the tubing. So the flexibility is a little bit of a hindrance. Um, however, the nice thing about the tubing is that it will not kink and it is crush proof. So if you did happen to accidentally drop something on the tubing, you're not going to crush it and uh, destroy your cooler. So we have all four of our screws mounted into our plates that will hold uh, our back plate will come through the back side of the motherboard and our studs will come up through here and then these will screw down onto the top of those studs to hold our pump assembly onto our motherboard and onto our CPU. So let's go ahead and move that out of the way and we'll show you our back plate assembly here. So what we have is these four studs that you can see they're threaded on one side. So if we were using the Intel uh, backplate, the Intel portion, now you can see if you look at the backplate this way that we would want this portion to be flat against our motherboard. So if we we're using AMD, we would want to put the screws through the AMD slots that way and because we're using Intel, we're going to put them through our slots this way. The inner slots are for 1155, 1156, and 1150. The outer slots would be for 1366 or 2011. So there's a little tab on the underneath of the screw. Not sure if you can see it in the camera there, um, but we'd want to make sure that you can see that it doesn't sit flat there. We want to make sure that it's lined up with the other portion of the hole. <clears throat> so here for the 1155, we actually want that little tab to be going through the other portion of the opening there so that we can take our little plastic mounting clip and we can see that just slides on and locks right in place. So it's a fairly easy assembly of our back plate. We get all our screws through, make sure they're sl flat, slide, lock in place. We repeat that four times, make sure our screws are flat. And now our back plate is assembled and ready for mounting. So now we can see here that our back plate will go right together into our plate. Of course, there will be the space for the CPU socket in there. And then we can see that the threads will stick up above that we screw our thumb screws down onto. One thing I will note about these thumb screws is when these were tightened down onto the socket, you can see here in the top that we can use a Phillips screwdriver. When we start to tighten them down, here's what happens. As we get a little tighter, the actual stud begins to come up through the center of the thumb screw and we get to a point where we can no longer turn cleanly our screw because the stud is actually pointing up through the center. So at that point, you would either have to use your, your hand and firmly tighten it down um, or use some kind of pliers around the outside to snug it up or you could get a flat blade screwdriver still inside because the Phillips screwdriver comes to a pointed tip like that 
it will no longer go down to get that final snug. So a flat blade screwdriver would do the trick or a pair of pliers. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to be mounting this inside our 780T um, on a B85 series motherboard. Um, we're not going to be installing it actually on a processor. As I said, we've already done our testing. Our base has been cleaned of our thermal paste. So we're just going to go through our basic mounting procedure and how the back plate comes through the motherboard, how everything secures tightly down to the motherboard itself. And before we do that, we'll go ahead and get our fans mounted. So we're going to go ahead and mount our fans to our radiator. And we can see our fans do have directional arrows on the side of them here. So the airflow flows from this side through to this side and the fan blades rotate this way. So because we're going to be, if I was going to be mounting this way, this would push air through the radiator. If I wanted to mount this way, this would pull air through the radiator. Because we're going to be mounting this to the top side of the case and the case fans will be inside the case, we're going to push the air through the radiator. We're going to use our long included fan screws. And again, this is the rubber fan. Once you line it up, the holes in the radiator for the uh, fan screws are very clean, so it's easy to get in. And all it takes is a little snug to get the fan in the, to get it snugged up to the radiator here. I'm going to go ahead and get all four started. And when we give it a little snug, we can see that fan mount flex a little bit there. So it holds it very tight and it will also prevent vibration because it is the rubber outer mounting on the fan. So again, very straightforward. We get our four screws, we get them snugged in, tightened up. Our van fan is very secure. There's no vibration at all. There's no need for a rubber spacer or anything to prevent vibration because of the rubber fan. And the fan screws are very, uh, hold the fan very secure in place. So we'll go ahead and get our other fan mounted here. And most of the time we can drop our screws in place. And then go ahead and line them up before we snug them tight so we don't strip out any screws into the radiator. We want to make sure our fans are securely mounted so that they don't fall off onto one of our components during the use of our computer. So we can actually see here if I loosen this one back a little bit, we can see the lip difference here between the fan and then when I stug it up, it sucks it right down onto that rubber. So again, don't over tighten. None of these components usually need to be tightened or torqued or anything like that. Um, just tighten down snugly, just like so. Very easy installation. Again, for cleaning this radiator, a nice feature is these fan blades are removable. So you wouldn't even necessarily have to continually take the fans off of the radiator to uh, clean the unit properly. Little compressed air, uh, however you wanted to do that. The fan blades could be removed and then they're just plastic. There's nothing to interfere. Uh, so they could be washed, uh, cleaned with alcohol, whatever you wanted to use to clean them. So a very nice black and red design. We see the, out, the fins on the outer portion of our fans here uh, to help the airflow. Again, these fans had very good static pressure um, and we did see that with the low fan speed testing uh, of our unit. So we're gonna go ahead and get our case down, get our uh, motherboard in place so that we can go ahead and mount our unit. We'll be right back, stay tuned. So here we can see our holes in the top side of the radiator. Now you could mount fans um, also on the top side for a push-pull setup and just have longer screws that went through and held them into your case all as one assembly. Um, but in this case we're just going to use the included fans and we're going to go ahead and show you the mounting here. The 780T has some rubber brackets inside our top mounting here. So all we have to do is line that up, get our included Phillips head black screws, and we'll go ahead and put some screws in to hold the radiator to our case.
and what I usually do because these units are not that heavy once we get uh, two screws in and I usually go corner to corner makes it a little easier to work with because we can free up our other hand uh, another thing to note if you do have a video card or other accessories inside the case which will come down inside the case in a minute here um, because of this rigid tubing it's kinda hard to put this block out of the way or outside of our case so it may be bumping into your video card or other components um, because of that rigid FEP tubing. So we'll go ahead here take some more screws go in each of our other corners Again, all of this just needs to be snug. We want to make sure that we are getting the threads in the radiator, that we are making it tight. But if you over tighten or if you use screws that are not, uh, these screws that are included with this unit that are longer, you could actually go down into the fins. And while the fins can, you know, on a radiator, the fins can get a little bent and that's okay but the tubes that run in between are where your water run. So if you had longer screws or you lost some screws and you wanted to put your own in, make sure that they're not going to be too long to go down and touch into that radiator because we could damage the radiator in doing that. So we'll go ahead and snug all our screws in, the eight included screws to the top of our case and we have a secure mount for our radiator. Moving on the bottom, the radiator does not move at all. So it's a very secure mounting system. And let's go ahead and drop it down. And fo we'll focus on the inside to show you what this looks like inside the case and also show you the CPU socket mounting. We're gonna go ahead and feed our back plate through our motherboard that we had previously assembled. So once we feed that through, we can look at uh, the installation here. It's pretty straightforward. Need to remove our CPU socket cover. Um, but here's where we run into, again, the PE or the FEP tubing, where it's very rigid. So it does cause a little bit of an issue when we're mounting, um, if it's right in place, everything stays in place. Uh, but if it's a little bit where it's putting a little bit of flex to that tubing, it's going to make the mounting process a little bit more difficult. Again here we're using our thumb screws that we talked about earlier with the Phillips head in the top. So we'd want to screw this side down to the studs of our back plate. and get all four of these started, snugged up, as I was explaining earlier, once we get them snugged down, we'll be able to see how we can't use our Phillips screwdriver anymore, and I will just grab a flathead screwdriver and go ahead and give them the final snug. So, here we can see with our tubing mounted, our radiator up to the top, I kept the tubing towards the back of the case. We have our GamerStorm logo straight up and down so that it's it's uh, going to be visually appealing. Uh, as I said, it does light up. This tubing would have been a little bit better to be flexed and over on this side. We could move the mounting brackets on the bottom of the CPU block uh, to do that. So you may want to pay attention to that if you want the tubing running a certain way inside your case to keep this... Uh, this logo straight up at the top. If we came to the other side, it might the, the plates on the block might mount in a different direction. But here we can see our tubing is nice and curved. It's pretty much out of the way of this logo, so you'll be able to see it clear through the side if you have um, a side panel window. Again, because it does light up. And we can see here when we have these screws all the way down now, a Phillips screwdriver does absolutely no good for us. So we'll go ahead and grab our flat blade screwdriver. And that fits in 
there. Give it one final snug, which we can see they're already just by hand. They get pretty tight. You don't need to over crank these down. And that's pretty much it. So it's kind of like a quarter turn after you've done them by hand. If you wanted to do that, I think if you were able to tighten them really tight by hand, or you could use a plier and come down over the top of the mounting here to get them a little bit tighter past what you can do with a Phillips screwdriver. So we can see again inside our case here, uh, it does look very appealing. The red fans are nice, especially if you have a red theme to your case. Instead of seeing how nice it looks inside the case, let's see how well it performed. We're going to go ahead and get our benchmark numbers up, so stay tuned for that. So looking at our benchmarks here, we can see that the max fan speed as opposed to our 40 decibel level, the 40 decibel level was very quiet, the max fan speed was pretty loud. We can see at our stock uh, CPU settings, the increase in performance was only 1 degree Celsius. Um, at our 4.4 overclock, we see a 2 degree Celsius idle and 1 degree Celsius load increase in performance. So while the 40 decibel, about 39 decibel that we tested, as opposed to the 53 decibel reading we received at max fan speed, doesn't really warrant just the 1 degree Celsius improvement because the fans do get pretty loud when they get up to that top speed. So overall with this cooler, we saw a lot of the same. The price of this unit was pretty much on par with other all-in-one closed loop water cooling units that are giving you the same features that this one has to offer. However, the performance of this unit seemed to be a little bit less than those of competing units. We also noticed that the fans get pretty loud at our max speed. So if you're gonna use the fan hub controller and you're gonna set them down or use the PWM portion and let it auto tune according to temperature, then the fans won't really be an issue. Again, with the fans running at a low speed, we did see just about the same performance even when the fans were running at the maximum speed. So for the increase in noise from the fans, it wasn't really a warrant over the very minimal increase in performance. We do get a three year warranty from Deepcool. Because of all of this, the performance just being on par, um, the fans getting slightly noisy even when running at a lower speed, um, they still performed fairly well, but the performance was still not anything exceptional. Um, we did like the rubber mounting on the fans to reduce vibration. Um, that was a nice feature, the removable fan blades, um, the light up on the pump. But for an all-in-one water cooling unit, instead of some of those features, I think there were other features that could have been integrated to better focus on the performance of this unit rather than the aesthetics. If you're gonna be running your CPU at stock speeds, this unit will perform fairly well but there are other air coolers um, that stay right on par with it. Uh, there are other water cooling units that per perform better even at a lower price point. Because of that, the Deep Cool Maelstrom 240 all-in-one liquid CPU cooler will re be receiving the silver award from High Tech Legion. Thank you for watching the video portion of our review of the Deep Cool Gamer Storm Maelstrom 240 liquid CPU cooler. I hope you enjoyed our review as well as our installation and numbers and how well this uh, CPU cooler performed. For the full review, make sure you go to the hightechlegion.com website and click right down here to subscribe to our future YouTube videos. Also make sure to go to Twitter and follow us at twitter.com forward slash hightechlegion and also go over to Facebook, give us a like at facebook.com forward slash htlreviews. Thanks for watching.